I feel like this is where we make the disclaimer that it is 9.30 after a very long day. Even if you're watching this at 11 o'clock in the morning, we're not exactly fresh-brained. So, yeah, deal with it. We're humans. I'm not Scott Manley. <laughs> I Hello, resist. and I am Scott Manley. <laughs> yes, hi guys. I'm Amy Shira Title, and you may know me from Vintage Space, the YouTube channel where I go through weird minutia in spaceflight history. Um, I always sit down with a sweater on, and then it gets warm. So today, I am joined <laughs> by the real Scott Manley. Um, introduce yourself for your own audience. Well, hello, I'm Scott Manley. I am best known as an astronaut on the internet. I'm not really an astronaut. In fact, I'm not even qualified to fly a plane. But I do fly spaceships on the internet. Awesome. And, yeah. And so what are we doing today? Today, I mean, you, you emailed me, or, or DM'd me on Twitter, rather, with the brilliant idea that I've been wanting to do for ages of, let's build a dinosaur. Which is, a dinosaur? You mean like a pterodactyl? Which is not the T-Rex, which for me this means T-Rex arms. Um, the dinosaur, as in the dynamic soaring uh, gliding vehicle that the U.S. Air Force and the NACA and the U.S. Navy developed but never launched, never flew, in Sad. the late 1950s and early 1960s. They had such big plans for this. There was so many awesome ideas they had, which, you know... They all tried to do in one thing in the shuttle, right? <laughs> this is so funny because I um, it's not, it's not like ha ha funny, but um, because one of the the talks that I give a lot of places is about dinosaur, and I always bill it as the space shuttle America didn't know it wanted before it got one that it didn't really need. Yeah, and uh, I took your thing literally, and I did actually build a flying dinosaur in Kerbal Space Program. Remember you putting that up on Twitter, and it was pretty epic. I feel like this is where we cut away and show that. So anyway, yes, we are getting started here. Yeah. And I, I, I figure actually it's an important moment before we get started that we talk about what we're drinking. Yeah. So a, I have yeah. Down to Earth by nice. 21st Amendment, Very which uh, features Ham, the chimpanzee on it. Having nice. returned from his mission uh, on Mercury. Yep. He's uh, relaxing on a shore and, you know, chilling out gotta hold this up to that camera there as Sounds well about right <laughs> i'm uh i'm not drinking very well tonight i don't know i was just like you know when you just get a weird craving for something you're like eh, i'm a grown-up i can do what i want i'm drinking not your father's ginger ale i have I seen that it's it's the same it's the same brewery that does it's small town brewery that does uh, not your father's root beer so it's 5.9 percent which is kind of awesome but it's just delicious and honestly like it's just been one of those days. I wanted something tasty, and I don't have any chocolate in the house, but I did have some boozy ginger ale, so I'm drinking boozy ginger ale, so cheers. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now what I'm looking for is something out the back. So this is the cockpit we're gonna have to go with, and you'll notice that the nose kind of goes up here, but I looked at the other cockpits, and this is the closest thing we have to a dinosaur. But, um, so this is what dinosaur looks like. It looks like a tiny, like a mini shuttle with little popped up wings on the side, flat bottom, and uh, room for one man and instrument bay and, and engine, and that's about it. And a ham sandwich. And a ham sandwich, yeah, so. Yeah, that's important. Do you know what kind of engine it was supposed to have? That's why I that's... was looking for my technical dinosaur book and I can't find it, because I don't remember off the top of my head what the engine was. You know all the technical things, and I know the technical, like, history of the program development. So... Do you know how long it was supposed to be? How about that? Again, about we reference. I don't have the reference book with me. Off the top of my head, I just can't remember. Oh, man. Okay. Do you, I don't know. Why can't I find that book? This is driving me nuts. Yeah. You That's keep, what the you keep pirate building. said. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a quick gander here. You found it. Okay. 
So now we get the fun of watching me flip through a book. <laughs> yeah, so I need to know roughly how big and, you know, that kind of thing. Prepare for these little... <laughs> Well, if you're going to be setting the challenge... Oh, no, I guess I was the one that... Set the challenge. You set the challenge I, on this one. I, I I accepted your challenge, which you had previously laid down. Technically. Technically. <laughs> Who cares about technicalities? Come on now. Technicalities are the difference between flying and crashing into the ground. I mean, true. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I, okay, there's like a whole, this book is awesome. It's a whole bunch of technical papers um, and all kinds of details about things as it developed. So I am looking at, hang on, let me just figure out what. Okay, this is according to early 1961 is roughly the date that we're getting this. Um, from nose to tail, it was 304 Feet? Inches. Inches. You're doing the spinal tap thing. The spinal tap thing? You never seen spinal tap? Oh, not since I was a kid. Uh, 18 foot, uh, like they ordered an 18 foot Stonehenge and got an 18 inch tall. <laughs> I do remember that. Personally, I do not think the problem was that the band was off. I think that the problem was that there was a Stonehenge on the stage that was in danger of being crushed by a dwarf. Yeah, so wait, how many meters? Could you do it in meters? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna, putting this on the I'm going to pull up my conversion calculator, so we might lose my video for a second here. Uh-oh. I'm trying to make something that's a ruler here. So this is about seven meters long. I think seven is probably too short. Hang on. I just want to get roughly the right proportions here. It's 7.72 meters long. 7.72 meters. So actually, the, if the I cockpit, do this... The cockpit width is... This thing's tiny, 1.3 meters. What? Yep. Oh my... Wait, how does somebody even fit into that? Uh, that's why I just said this thing is tiny. And the wingspan, uh, like from... So it's shaped like a bit of a triangle, right? Um, mm -hmm. The wingspan from the rear is just under 4.3 meters. Are you sure the cockpit's that small? Well, unless unless it is actually 52 feet. <laughs> the two lines, here's, ugh. The two so lines he, means here's inches the problem. and the one means feet, right? Right. Yeah. This this here is a 1.25 meter cockpit. Right. And that is a two meter cockpit. Right. So which one looks more likely? Top or the bottom? I mean, the bottom, I guess, but at the same time, it's all relative, right? I mean, I mean, I, I guess know. I haven't looked at the wings. How many Actually, people, how many? Because this is one man. This is this is a single pilot, right? Like, it's not yeah. meant to have a crew. This is for, oh golly, that so, is. So the fuselage shape, the fuselage size, is about one point three. You think? Um, that that seems too small. The width of the fuselage. So this is not the wings, right? This is the fuselage. Right, the so fuselage. The, um, the width of the of the cabin is fifty-two inches. Fifty-two inches, and that's like one and a half meters. It's one point three two meters. Oh, man, this. Well, for a start, the texture on that is wrong. Well, I'm I'm less concerned with this aesthetics and more concerned <laughs> with just entertainment value. This is historical accuracy. It's Kerbin. It's not Earth. <laughs> oh, oh, actually, this is Earth. This is going to be Earth scales. Really? Oh, you actually yeah, so, have them Yeah, so this is why I'm doing real numbers, yeah. So that's why I'm asking oh, for the real numbers here. last time, we just went on, like, rough... Does this yeah. look okay? Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> yeah, but now, now we have the science. Yeah, we have to do it for realsies, as the for kids reals. like me say. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh my god, really? Is this the... It's tiny! The thing is tiny. This is the one. Oh my god, I'm always get this mixed up. It's so cute. Neil Armstrong developed the launch abort procedure for the dinosaur, and he did it using a sky lancer. I okay, maybe. Get the sky lancer and the sky rocket mixed up. I always because because uh, Scott Crossfield broke Mach two in the other one. <laughs> um, <laughs> one of those things I always have to like double check. Okay, who did what and what. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's, I mean, that was a small plane. It's not a huge plane. 
This and is so tiny. I can't believe this. Reconfigured that plane to have roughly the same aerodynamic characteristics as the dinosaur to work at the launch abort procedures in '62. Um, so yeah, it's not a it's not a big vehicle. Yeah, so that's a seven meter long. I'm using this this extra bit as a ruler, which is kind of cheating. Or it's not cheating. It's just kind of convenient. So this this is roughly the right size. So we can actually do it like correct mass and everything if we want to be proper nerds about this. Of course, that does mean that if we're not Neil Armstrong, it'll probably crash. Because, you know, Neil Armstrong was actually he was pretty, pretty good at this good flight. Pilot. Yeah, uh, I heard that he did some awesome things. Do you hear about that whole uh, moon landing? I did. I did, as a matter of fact. Although, the internet tells me that I'm wrong for believing in it. <laughs> well, what does the internet know? Oh, the internet is just so full of opinions right now. <laughs> the internet is full of opinions. But, uh, you, you know, the great thing is that in America, we are allowed to have our own opinions. Yes. Yes, we But are. in reality, you're not allowed to have your own facts. Also true. I'm, so I'm putting these wings kind of far back. I think... That now, how high pretty, is that? That looks It looks pretty good. good. What we need is control surfaces here, right? Yes. You, w yeah. you know, I, I'm a physicist and I get people correcting me about my, you know, Law, Newton's laws. I always get Newton's second law mixed up. Which one is the second? Uh, well, that... second and third. Third oh, is equal and opposite equal reaction. reaction. Second is force, mass versus... times acceleration. Oh, and the first I... one is something needs something to get going. That's yeah, obviously first... not how Newton described it. <laughs> Let's be clear. <laughs> An object in motion, uh, you know, without not subject right. to any force, right. will just keep moving in the Moving's same way. Yeah. Oh man, how's that? That's looking pretty sweet. I that actually say. looks awesome. That actually looks really good. Yeah. Um, now what we're going to need is reaction control thrusters. We're going to need a little uh, engine adapter. I'm using these like fuel tanks here because I can then fill them or empty them to create the exact distribution of mass. Yeah. So I'm just shrinking that down, and then we can mate something onto the back just to make sure this flies. But I think. So you have control surfaces on the the. Oh my god, I've, technical is not me. The uppy bit of the wings at the back, and also the flat bit on the wings in the back. Those are where Yeah, we get these are. horizontal yeah. and vertical stabilizers, basically. Those are so the these real ones. words. Yeah, so we're just going to apply yaw control to these, and disable pitch control, and the other way around here. So I am concerned that I don't have a separate set of controls for adjusting my roll versus yaw, uh, uh, pitch. Which will probably mean lead to me nosing down every time I try to roll the aircraft. But you know, whatever. You're the you're the internet pilot. I'm the internet pilot again. Not qualified to actually fly a real aircraft. Why can't you fly a real aircraft? Because I've never got flying lessons yet. But you're not like unable to. You could do it. No, I could. Yeah, in fact, I've uh, found out there is another guy called Scott Manley who teaches people to fly planes. You should you should fly with him. It would yeah, make great uh, internet he's in content. Florida. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you should fly with we'll, him. We'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. Okay, we're loading high test peroxide into it. That should actually be flyable. You know what? Uh, I've had enough sitting around. I'm gonna try flying this somewhere. Now we need to find an engine. We're just gonna use like a solid rocket motor. Those are awful wings, but we don't really care. We just need it to not flip around as soon as it launches. So. Um, so I'm going to call this Stonehenge after, uh, you know, Good. final tap. Okay. Uh, possibly. I'm going to launch. Ready? All right. Oh. <laughs> so much for that. That was the best non-launch ever. What just happened? Did you... Uh, apparently we we're too heavy. Oh, wow. Thrust... Well, actually, so my thrust to mass ratio is 0.81. So maybe we'll actually start to lift off when it reaches one. So I'm just going to hold on until then. Okay. Uh, maybe it let here. I'll just use my little thrusters. Oh yeah, point nine. We're getting oh, ready wow. to take anytime soon. I like anytime soon. I like that it's just building up, but into the pavement. Point nine seven. Point nine eight. Point nine nine. And it should start going. No, it's actually stuck on the ground. It's clearly melt. There, I see it moving. Oh my god. Can you imagine wow. if real rockets did that? <laughs> Just like sat dead on that. the ground. 
Well, there was Atlas ones that did that, right? They sat in the pad and the engines but didn't generate enough thrust. Didn't they have, but wasn't it stuck on hold down arms? It wasn't just like sitting on the ground. Because if it was sitting directly on the ground, the fire would just melt up the rocket, wouldn't it? Well, it exploded. Yeah, right. and then and then the reaction being an explosion. Um, There's only some graphical glitches here because I was trying to make this thing look more... Um, you see there's supposed to be cities and stuff here that we can drop stuff on. Oh, and the, we're now actually going downhill here. Oh, yeah, nose is really starting to drop. Uh... Look, Bit survived for a few more seconds. But it was able to fly. Nothing survived. He's dead. He's gone. He's gone, Amy. So cute. I hate killing them. <laughs> he, he, he's brave. He knew what he signed up for. Ah, uh, fair. This isn't going to totally work if we can't show in the video, but I just stumbled on a graphic. I haven't looked at this book in ages, but a graphic of what the pilot looks like in the cockpit. So you said it looked small? Yeah. Okay, so he's, it's like he's flying a glider. He, like, he put it on. He didn't get into it. He put it on. Yeah, it's like the Mercury. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, booster character. So, booster characteristics for the Titan Two. Are we doing Titan Two configuration or Titan Three? Uh, it doesn't matter because the Titan Two and the Titan Three. I thought they were both basically the same, but the Titan Three has the SRBs on the side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. What? So here's the. Okay. There's a space launch system proposed in 1961 for dinosaur. Oh, yeah, I mean, they, they tried a whole lot of things, yeah. Yep. I just like that it was called the Space Launch System, which is, you know... <laughs> right, SLS. What we have now. <laughs> what we're getting, whether we like it or not. No. I guess what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and build out the first stage of the Titan. I just don't remember. We can, we can come back to it. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the first stage engines in the Titan. The tit okay, the Titan II LR91 AJ5 second stage sustainer engine had one gas generator nozzle. Which AJ5, did you say? Yes. Which swiveled to provide roll control. Wait, have, we have AJ10s. AJ10. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this is... Okay, I guess we're, we're not... We're not doing that. I'm looking for the first stage now. That's what I'm looking for. I was just I was just going for something that looks like eh, like dinosaur on a rough trajectory. I didn't uh Yeah, I I figure I can I think I have the parts though. I know I have the parts, but I was gonna, you know Uh Oh, these are all parts that claim to be associated Oh look, here's the LR eighty seven booster, which is what I now I remember. What is That's this what, mod? Like, what is this? Is this this is this is realistic space? progression. Yeah, it has everything. Huh. So you can start out with, uh, you know, the X1 and then fly the X15. Assuming you can build them and not kill yourself. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So what we're going to need, of course, on this is bigger wings. It's very important to have big, big wings on this upper stage because the center of you know, center of a lift or whatever is going to be so far forward. So I'm going to put on these big things. We did this with Von Braun, if you remember. And it mostly flew. Right? <laughs> mostly. Um, but the Titan II does not have fins. No, but, but they, they, if you look at the pictures of it launching on a Titan II, I know they add the big fins. Yeah. So we're going, yeah. We're going with the fantasy rather than the reality. Even because, the reality? Yeah. Who wants reality when you can have the fantasy of a dinosaur? So yeah, this is a real world, incidentally. This is real scale and everything. We have to get up to eight kilometers per second. Oh my god, it is Earth. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I get my stuff figured out here. That looks awesome. Yeah. It's not going to lift off very quickly. That's okay. So the engines have to spool up to speed. There we go, and there, let it go, and it... Oh man, this is where it could really use the Titan III. Strap some it's... boosters on it. Yeah, more boosters. More boosters. Now here's the thing, what way do I want to actually fly this? I'm going to let it go upwards a little further. How what? Gonna, how 
mass I'm, I'm look I'm curious now that I think about it the mass of dinosaur with one pilot versus the mass of Gemini with two pilots oh I'm sure dinosaur weighed a whole lot more Here, yeah yeah I've never I've honestly now that I'm saying that out loud I have never thought about that no it totally makes sense it, it I sort of just assumed that it's much more complicated and has much more stuff in it that it would weigh more. Well, I mean, that's one of the things. Yeah. It has more stuff. More wings. You know, those big wings are on the shuttle to provide cross-range capabilities. Right? So it could do single orbit flights and land on the west coast instead of returning back to the east coast. Yeah. It could do crazy stuff. And it was never declassified what that stuff was going to be. Thank you, Yet. <laughs> Yet. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess it's got to be 30 years to the end of the program where that stuff is declassified. Or 30 years. Well, 30 years is the typical declassification period for NASA, I think. Yeah, but I, I, don't I don't know. know but I don't know if DOD is involved, then it might be the 50 years, or if it's CIA, it's the 50 years. Well, a lot of the MOL stuff's been declassified. But I was doing, I was reading a lot of that. Fly. I need that to didn't go fly. Through, yeah. I need to go through all of these things. I, I went back and I looked at the Soviet version, which was pretty cool. Nice. They actually showed like a an astronaut on one of the remaining stations, showing how it would all work, how they would target everything, and how they would aim the station to shoot the gun and everything. That was pretty sweet. I uh, had a. I was at a like a. I was interviewing a guy, and uh, he was at Almaz. The company was called Almaz. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I know what that's all about. Uh-oh. I think I might I think I might have flamed out. Ah, uh, yes, feed pressure too low. No, the, the, the type of fuel tank I have is the wrong kind. Oh, well. And oh, now this... we have no engine. And now, it, yes. And now the fuel pressure is too low. So I guess we'll just do this. Ugh. That's not so bad. We get some sort of control he here. But these ones aren't dra uh, aren't doing this. <gasps> oh, pardon me. Let's just try flying this. I'm going to point it along that. Hopefully we end up coming down somewhere and not breaking up. I don't think we're going fast enough. The real question is... We should have put some landing gear on it. I know, but it would have made it heavier and harder to fly. I mean, yeah, but less death trappy for whoever is inside. Who's <sighs> in there? Jebediah, you know. He has died so many times. Wow, we're going up to 250 kilometers, so this is totally an astronaut. Yeah, I no, actually. in space. Yeah, my, uh, I was thinking that the second stage would fire, and the problem with that second stage was that it has such low thrust to mass ratio that we had to really loft the trajectory a great, you know, a lot. And then that meant that when we actually cut out, we're now on a very steep trajectory rather than a very shallow one. So we're doomed. I'm just gonna let this run. Well, you learn... Learn from your mistakes. From mistakes in engineering, right? That's the whole thing about engineering? Uh, no. Ideally, you, you figure out the mistakes ahead of time. Yeah. You know, uh, many people... When, when I put on my engineering hat and software engineering, many people uh, accuse me of being a pessimist, when in fact, I'm more a worst-case scenarioist. So, yeah. Worst-case scenarioist. Yeah, it's not... A, it's, not a, it's a pessimist who's, like, trying to plan... To make sure that the bad, the worst case doesn't happen. That's why I'm big into killer asteroids. <laughs> we are going down at two kilometers per second. Okay. Yet yeah, five G's, seven G's, nine G's, ten, fifteen, and yes. There we go. <laughs> Uh, he's, um, he could, he might be able to parachute. Here, let, let me, let me see if he can jump out. There. Does he have a parachute? No, he doesn't have oh, a parachute. No! no! Oh, he's 
Oh, I uh, look. Magically, the Sky Fairy comes and saves him. The Sky Fairy. That's your Sky? new name. You're Sky Fairy. Yes, I'm Sky Fairy. And uh, we just need to make this launch faster, I think. Should we try taking this to orbit? Or we'll put the landing Can gear on. Can we put on. landing gear on it, please? Okay, you and your landing gear. What are you, Miss Safety Inspector? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> Just call me Little Miss Killjoy. <laughs> Little Miss Kill, not Killjoy. That's the problem. Not Killjoy. I want to. Yeah. There's one here that looks like. Well, it's t it's rear skids. It looks like it's all skids. Oh, there's skids. Yeah. I don't have skids. The X15 had skids too. It had front nose wheel and rear skids. Yeah, so yeah it's, brushes. Um, it's definitely skids in the back, and I'm. Well, I can't. I don't have deployable skids, so it's gonna have to be these. All right, I've got, uh, I mean, I'm seeing schematics of one with a nose wheel, one with a, s a nose skid. So, but we've only got wheels, so let's use wheels. But it's a tricycle yeah. gear, so two in the back. Yeah, I'm actually going to cheat a little here uh, because cause what I have is, uh, if I t the wings, I think, are not quite as straight as I would like, so I'm attaching it to the body because I know the body will be straight. As a okay, here we go. So I'm gonna move it back. It doesn't need gear. It doesn't need. It doesn't need the gear to be placed forward so it can pitch up at launch. So that's fine. I don't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is gonna be our suborbital like awesome. Let's do this. Oh wait, let's actually point it vertically again. Burn time: one hundred and fifty-six seconds. Oh, 156. So that would be 2 minutes and 30, right? 2 minutes 36. Do you want me to double check it? No, 156. So 2 minutes and 36 seconds. Oh, sorry. I'm going past it. See, I can actually match the burn time of this engine to it by, you know, making the stage the right length. And the only problem is it suddenly stopped working for some reason. Why is Why? it halfway through the floor? That's not uh, where you want your rocket. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just how we do things around here. Oh, and you know what? The landing gear needs to come in. What? This looks pretty nominal. But, uh, thank you for using space terms. Nominal. Yay! Uh, okay, we're going. We're going! Yes! Oh, and we put the landing gear in as well. Oh. That's obviously not something you would have problems with in the real thing. Typically in these, once the landing gear was deployed, it wouldn't stow again. Because that would just be, you know, too much electronic. Too much, no, not electronic, too much hardware, right? So I'm going to start turning to go north here. Because I want to go sideways. And so I'm actually doing an inverted launch. And I'm trying to remember why the shuttle did that. I completely forgot. Oh, the worst part is that I talked about this in my video about why rockets roll going into orbit. And I can't remember the answer off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, sadly, I'm not actually an encyclopedia of all the knowledge ever. <laughs> but you know what? Here's the thing. You could tell people anything and they would believe you because you speak with such confidence. Well, I know, but I don't want to lie to the humans. Um, I'm... That's why you're not a politician. <laughs> Blorp. Uh, yep. No, I, I'm much quicker to say, you know what, I don't remember. I'm gonna look it up. Um... Okay, so I'm getting... We're picking up some roll oscillations here, so I'm adjusting these fins. Uh... I'm making a note to look that up so I can pop the video on screen at the right point. And yeah, I did mention I was, you know, writing some stuff, but I should mention that later, maybe. Or I should keep that a secret until later. Uh, I'm just going to hold... mentioned it, but you've mentioned it, like... Clend Coily. Clandestinely. Clandestinely, yes. I don't know, it probably never happened, that's the thing, because... Spare time. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> spare time! If only I could get some! I know, I know. I feel so horrible. People keep asking me about the Vintage Space podcast, and I have such a good idea for the podcast that I want to do so badly. I just do not have time. 
There we go. Yes. That was good. Now, now we can roll, roll this whole thing. So I'm going to fire up the reaction control system now. Now this thing doesn't have nearly the thrust of the the rest of the thing, but it should let us pick up some serious lateral speed here. Yeah. The RL10, it's the only engine, you know this, it runs on the expansion cycle. You know this? Okay, so the expansion, so you know how regular rocket pumps kind of work? They feed in fuel and the fuel, you know, they burn the fuel and that drives the pumps. With expander cycle, what you do is you feed in something like liquid hydrogen into the cooling jacket around the engine and it vaporizes to hydrogen and then that drives the turbo pumps. So there's no combustion happening that's driving the... Uh, it doesn't have an independent thing. So, it, you know, it's it's kind of convenient. But there's a, a limit to how much thrust you can get from these because the surface area of the... If you make the engine bigger, the surface area grows as the square of the size, but the fuel capacity requires to grow as a cube. So the fuel requirements grow faster than the uh, drive requirements. Huh. Yeah, you're just nodding along here at this point. I've never thought through fuel like that? Uh, there's a you know, there's things to know, I guess. I just did a thing about rocket plumbing a few months ago and uh, had to explain that. Right. Because these are the things that I ask someone like you about. Yeah, but I'm not qualified to answer. <laughs> yeah, but you're more qualified than I am to answer. Oh, uh, well. Well, there's the, you know, the, again, the whole, like, confidence thing, you know. Yeah, but I have confidence in myself to know when I need to ask an expert. <laughs> <laughs> this is looking great. Look, we're flying out over Washington and everything. I don't know. Yeah, this is, well, I mean, I think, what was the, what were the plans for Dinosaur? Because that's the thing. I guess they were all testing out in California, so they would do a suborbital hop. And then land back. Disaster was the play. It was such a mess. The program was such a mess. So, <sighs> but they weren't planning to launch from Florida, right? Um. <laughs> so, I mean, the whole impetus for Dinosaur came from sort of this interest in hypersonic flight that kind of came out in the mid nineteen fifties. Um, it was really kind of pioneered and spearheaded by Walter Dornberger, who was head of the the uh, German. Army's rocket program in the Second World War. He was. He's the guy that came boss. up with the Silber Vogel. No, right? that was Eugen Sanger. Oh, Sanger. Okay. So, but sorry. but Sanger was working on this idea. So he had this idea in the mid '30s. He was working on it for the German Air Force while von Braun and Dornberger were, were developing what became the V2 and the V series of rockets for the Army. And they knew about each other. And Sanger wanted to get his called so many things, but like you know the anti Potter anti-potal bomber anti-potal bomber yes slash this like skip glide boost glide vehicle um the whole idea like dinosaur is it's got the flat bottom so as it goes up it can bounce off the atmosphere like a stone skipping on a pond and cover distance without having to burn more fuel so yes von brown knew about this idea he was into gliders already and dornberger got a copy of sanger's post-war report because sanger was like desperate to find somebody to fund it but couldn't because germany was destroyed um and dornberger ended up pitching a similar idea to uh bob woods the chief engineer at bell aircraft in the early 50s bell of course being the company that built the x1 so Bell is super into cutting edge aircraft that are doing crazy developmental things in engineering. Um, Woods is super excited at the idea of of a hypersonic vehicle. You know, this is flying, re-entering the atmosphere, even suborbital, just re-entering and landing um, hypersonic at Mach 25 or Mach 20. Wow. And then transonic, uh, subsonic to a nice gliding landing on a runway or a dry lake bed. Um, and of course, you don't go from like Mach 1 with the X1 to Mach 20 because that's insane. So that's where the X15 actually came in as the interim period, the interim step of this supersonic research program between the X1, which was just breaking the sound barrier, to Dinosaur slash, it was had like 15 million names, um, including a weapon system 464L. Um, 
so dinosaur would sort of be like the final round of this so it, it got a lot of support with early uh from the the naca the national advisory committee for aeronautics and early nasa and the dod and the air force um but ultimately it could never keep pace with mercury but when it was getting a lot of funding there were supposed to be three phases that the first phase would be um captured glide flights like the same way the x-15 flew this would be underneath the wing of a b-52 released fire its engine go up on these like big suborbital arcing flights for for uh re-entry heating yep. and some would be speed runs like the x-15 did speed runs versus altitude flights um eventually it would go and do single orbit missions and then the extended version of dinosaur which is just like like the advanced concept of the of the vehicle was to do multi-orbit missions so it was sort Ooh. of like on the books as like this really cool sp oh wow that is on fire I get yeah, now we're coming. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. This is not good. I think that, ah, what was that? That happened so fast. That, that that was the cockpit disintegrating. Apparently the cockpit is not specced for re-entry for some reason. <laughs> so that was going about as fast as the X-15 did, was. That was, was that what, Mach 7-ish? Yeah, Mach, just over Mach 7 there. So... Clearly, the materials I'm using are not correct. You know what? I think I'm just going to turn off max temperature because that would make things easier. Look, we still have bits flying past here. Because dinosaur was supposed to re-enter around Mach twenty. Oh, oh. all these oh my bits. God, a low roster quadrant. That's uh, terrible. Yeah. Um. Because so, even when Dinosaur was scaled down, it was supposed to re-enter at about Mach 17. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that so I, I'm going to go back, and we're going to try one test flight to make sure I can land on these, and then I'm going to bring out the Titan 3C to, like... I'm going to make this, like, a little jewel kind of test. Okay. That should do us just fine. Oh, it's, it's going to be... Li so little Joe, but it's massive. <laughs> Oh, you know, one of the things I always meant to build in Kerbal Space Program is the the whole... You know, you know the idea of how they were going to test the shuttle originally, the carrier aircraft? One of the early proposals, let's say, was uh, to bolt a pair of B-52s together. Yeah. <laughs> I... I'm sorry, base? What? Base? That's all... What? They're gonna bolt two B fifty twos together and live use it to lift like, the shuttle. Wait, wait, wait. Then have the shuttle hanging, hanging underneath. under the joint. Wait, oh my it's, god! It's back. Are they you were gonna serious? Hang. Right, because they were still thinking about X planes being dropped from a B fifty two, and they were like, "Well, one B fifty two is not enough. What if we bolt them together?" Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that that was gonna happen, but it was one early proposal. It was probably a rejected proposal, to oh, be I'm, honest. I'm sure, I'm sure it got as far as a... What about with this? No. <laughs> Why is this thing... This thing is spinning too hard. How this is thing... it still spinning? I don't know, because my reaction control thrusters are clearly not giving me any respect here. Oh, maybe it's because I'm pushing... Trying. No, it is. That's the way I'm rolling. That's how I roll. Uh, uh, you need a, uh, you need a shirt that just has a spacecraft and like a deadly roll that says that's how I roll. That's how I roll. <laughs> oh come on, come on! You know what? This is this is actually made of the problem. I've got a stability assist on and it's confused. That's it. You see, once I turn the computer off, I get some control back. Okay. So I'm actually having it's the... It's terrifying that you have to turn the computer off to get control. <laughs> Look, you switched off your targeting computer. <laughs> I'm using the force. Come on. I can do this. So now we're actually coming down in a much more sensible you know, descent. We're only descending at 800 meters per second. And not only that, but we're slowing down because of the power of this these wings. There's a bit of a shimmy going on here, but I... Oh, now we're down to 700 meters per second vertical. I have no idea. I have no reference frame for meters per second. It's great. Um, just multiply it by Why are three. we always on fire? Why is it always on fire? 
It's just what's cool. Okay, now I gotta... Oh, oh. It paused for a second there. We're going at Mach 3. I don't think it'll explode just yet. We're still pulling about 9 Gs in this turn, though. I'm just gonna try and turn it... That's the Gulf of Mexico, I guess. Okay, we're now... We're now about Mach 2.5. You know what? I should cut the authority of these control surfaces down. I know that you're... I know this is a weird angle to view from, but it uh, it just looks like you're flying sideways, and it just freaks me out every time. <laughs> well, you know, it's, I it's know what's happening, but just every time I look at, it, I'm like, why is it happening? Oh, it's just what we need to do to control this thing. Oh, 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 oh! You see that? I almost lost control there. Okay, so what we've got is a weird stability issue going on here. I am going to bring up my pitch authority here to try and get my... I, so I am now in... Oh, wow, you see that? I overpitched and I totally was losing control of that thing there. I think part of the problem is I've got too much weight at the back here, so I'm wondering if I can pump this fuel forwards. Uh, uh, out. So I think what's happening is the reaction control thrusters at the front are burning fuel because of the way they're piped up. These ones aren't burning for some reason, so this fuel tank isn't emptying. Huh. And so what I'm doing is I'm pumping fuel forward for stability reasons. That's what's going on. There we go. Okay, so now now we're back under control again. Whew! Well, that was that was a little hairy there. <laughs> So you can see I'm just kind of hanging around at uh, about a thousand feet, just over a thousand, trying to bleed off speed here so that we can land it safely. I should probably be looking where I'm going rather than where I'm, I am. There we go, so that's 300 meters. That's a, oh, oh, now we're definitely feeling that roll there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I'm going to turn on the reaction control thrusters there. See that? Uh, I'm going to increase the roll authority. That looks like you're moving so fast. Uh, I'm moving about... I'm moving I'm like half the speed of sound right now, so this is not a good speed for landing. No, it's really not. <laughs> and I'm moving at 300 feet now. And the whole thing just wants to roll. I wonder if it's getting control input from a joystick or something. That, that's what's going to happen. I'm going to find out that there's a joystick. Whoa! At least it glides really well. The way that, the, at least on my screen, the way the graphics are moving, it looks like you're flying sideways. It feels like I'm flying sideways here. Oh my god. Ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! Thank you. <laughs> Again. I don't know if we're gonna get him home at all here. Ah, why was there a second expl- Okay, what do, what do we have? Oh my god, I'm this is I'm just looking like, to see what survived. This is like the fourth time- No, it was engines last time when the, our rocket exploded and we just had like a shower oh. of engines. Oh my god, I love the singular you, landing gear. You know what I'm thinking? Amazing. And so I may be experiencing the bug where landing gear doesn't work. I like how the landing gear says, get rolling. <laughs> the, the brand, the uh, get rolling. Womp womp. La yeah, light, light year, light year instead of good year, obviously. That's so funny. Uh, okay, well, look, look. In theory, this glides. The last thing we need to do is put it into orbit. Titan three C. There. 
So I, I spec this out some time back with exactly the right performance, which is why I knew I had the parts in this. And unfortunately it goes through the, the roof of this building. Oh my god, that's massive! Yeah, it's uh, mostly correct as well. So what I'm gonna do... Now, but... That's massive! <laughs> I'm gonna basically this save tiny part... glider is gonna look ridiculous on top of that. There, okay. I think that looks pretty good. So these are these are all the correct engines and the tanks are the correct sizes and the burn times that yeah what we're missing a tank here. Uh let me just check. Do this, 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 this. Oh actually we're fine. Okay. We're ready to launch and we shall go this way. Oh at that. Beautiful! And it takes off really fast! Yeah, that was real fast. That's the power of solid rocket boosters. Those things are crazy. I mean, there's a whole... I remember seeing a whole scientific video from one of the engineers explaining how these things steer. Pretty cool. I think these are the ones... Maybe I'm, I'm forgetting, but... One of these things they steer by injecting oxidizer into the uh, into this like combustion chamber area. So you would squirt it. Oh, it's losing it. It's losing. It's losing. It's losing stability here. Eh, that, it, that doesn't look good. Exploded. We got dead. <laughs> well, Jebediah is still alive technically. But he's gonna die. Can we he's give gonna... him a parachute? <laughs> Unfortunately, we, we could attach a parachute to this. You want to do that? Let's attach a parachute to this thing. It's it's not correct, but let's do it. Just for him. This is this is our contribution to the design of the dinosaur, and you can say that you designed a, an improved safety version by uh, adding a parachute. We can find a parachute there. Let's just stick that right there behind his head. Just so that I feel better about the number of times we've killed Jeb. Yeah, I mean, if I know he's basically... a computer, but still, he computers have feelings too. So what I think we need to do is add some add some stabilizers on the bottom here. We just need For some wings. And at launch? Yeah, just for... yeah. Make them a bit longer and narrow, narrow them at the tip. Offset them backwards. And put two of them on because that's what the professionals do. <laughs> well, the idea of rocket explodes. Alright, let's own up to it. Who forgot to put the second wing on the rocket? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we're reaching like one and a half hours. I guess the more we talk, the less footage we, the more footage we have to edit. I know. It's getting worried. Just check it. Get this yeah. thing. Let's get this thing into orbit so that we have less work to do later. <laughs> I'm starting to worry that this camera is going to run out. I'm also out of beer as well. I'm out of. I'm out of beer too. Okay, let's just take this to orbit. Let's do it. Let's do it. Woo! Off it goes once again. Yeah, this looks That looks so way better. Adding wings just makes it look more stylish. Like, there's so much to be said for some, a good pair of wings. This do, I do need to flatten the trajectory on this thing a bit more, though. Oh, we're going transonic. We're just blowing through the sound barrier on this thing. Ah, that's bad. That looks better. Basically, I'm on fire and heading towards space at almost Mach 3. That way. Just go sideways, dammit! We need to get into orbit! Forget about your going upwards plans. Sideways, that's where the plans are. Okay, see, they still had a little bit of thrust in them. Yeah. Oh. Apparently, my main engine never fired. <laughs> <laughs> my engine never fired. How did that happen? How did, the, how did we overlook that one? I, I think when I 
copied it. Maybe the fuel levels were not copied over. Uh, let's just... Let's just fix this. That needs to have aerosine. That needs to have kerosene. I'm so bad, I forgot to fuel my rocket. And that needs to have kerosene. Apparently copying a thing over doesn't copy over the fuel. <sighs> you know what? When you copy a rocket uh, in reality, the fuel doesn't come over. That's why we have to fuel them ahead of time. Ah, oh, man. At least it flew better. It did fly better. It probably flew a lot faster than it should have because it didn't have any fuel in it. Oh. So... Well, this will be fun. <laughs> There we go. And there, now immediately start turning this thing. That looks more like it. Maybe the whole thing was unstable because it didn't have any fuel in these core stages, but honestly, I think having the wings was the correct decision regardless. I mean, Von Braun, he loved having his wings, right? Okay, Mach 1. You can actually look at it from inside now. Four hundred meters per second. You see, it looks pretty good from the inside, like we're taking off from Florida. It does. Oh, look at that. Definitely need to flatten out this trajectory, though. So that's Mach 2 now. Yeah, these are uh, UA-1205 solid rocket boosters. Titan 3 had a long career. Okay, and then we're coming up on Mach 4. We have about 11 seconds of fuel left, so I'm going to start firing that middle stage. Yep, generating thrust there. And now we're going to let these side stages lose thrust. Hear that? We've now got that core stage running. And... Ditch. Yes, that's the way they're supposed to go. Totally done. That looks yes. way better. Let's uh, set our orientation for orbit now. So yeah, the second stage, let me just remember. Yeah, th that is the correct stage distribution. So that is a pair of AJ-10s, because I built this elsewhere. I just don't know if that was what was paired with the dinosaur. I couldn't find it. Yeah, well, okay. I'm going to go with your guess at this point, because... Uh, this is, could be a very long night. At night. <laughs> yeah, we should probably be... I don't know if this will end up getting into space. It, it'll it be cool to get it into space, though. And, uh, yeah, we'll probably just need to quit this and figure out how to edit it. Eh, that'll be... that'll be fine. Yeah. And look, he's got his parachute. So if everything goes wrong, he, he'll be at fine. At least we can save Jeb. Well, he, it's, assuming he doesn't burn up. But if his vehicle breaks up on re-entry, he'll be fine. Yeah. He'll be okay. Hey. And it flies okay. pretty good. Uh, next stage. Whoa, there we go. There we go. That's uh, 4.5 kilometers per second. Sorry, is the system that's speeding up your time called Smart ASS? No, Smart ASS is up here. What is that? All I can see is that, that it really is... Oh, okay. System. That's okay. my computer system. Oh, God. It's right, it's right, it's right under the bar of, of speeding, and I just looked at it because it was red and caught my eye. But Ah, uh, yeah. Smart ass. Good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, automatic stability system. Yeah. And this was the smart one, so it's the Smart ASS. Yeah. 
This is, if you ever play Kerbal, this is Mechanical Jeb. It will do most of the flying for oh, you. that's what Mech Jeb looks like. Yeah, just looks like a bunch of windows. Doesn't look like a robot Jeb. I would like a robot Jeb. Uh, I've got a 3D printed Jeb, but that's not the same thing. Yeah, I uh, have a lot of things. I've, oh yeah, and I have a, you know, one of these guys. Oh my god, that's adorable. He's a plushie. Okay, we're almost getting ready for the net, the final stage, and we are going at six kilometers per second. Well, the main problem with staging is that when you have all these mods that gives you the realistic plan, they also make the rocket tanks, the fuel tanks, behave like real fuel tanks. So if you are in zero G for too long, the fuel right, just right, floats right. around in blobs. Do they have the and, option of adding yes. ullage motors? Yes, you do. Yes, they do. However, I just hit space very quickly in stage before the fuel realizes that it's been set free from the chains of gravity. Yeah. It, I, I don't play, I keep the fuel guessing. Okay, we're at 6.5 kilometers per second. And we're soon gonna start dropping, but I think we're okay. So we're now at 6,700. And now, yeah, so now we're actually falling backwards, but that's fine because we have plenty of lateral speed and plenty of time to build it up. Not a lot of people realize that rockets actually, when they go into orbit, a lot of the time their last section of their burn, they're actually falling back. Because huh. they're maximizing their performance by doing that. So, so there, like, this is a dinosaur. It's getting into orbit. Does look so. Where, where? Can you zoom out to the map to show us where our orbit is? Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's actually if just wait until we're in we're orbit. In or <laughs> we're not quite in orbit yet. We're not quite in orbit. I we're so close. Only know how to read orbit by looking at the map. <laughs> ah, because of the numbers thing. Not not good with the numbers. All right, so I'll just yeah, it. yeah. We have coordinates here. We're over the Atlantic, obviously. Yeah. So, I mean, there's the Caribbean over that way. And that's all there is to see. Okay. Mm. I'm just trying to make sure we get into orbit here. And now our vertical speed is rising once again, so we're coming out of this slow dive towards the planet, finally. We're gonna hopefully get into like a 300 kilometer orbit which is pretty good i don't how how high did they originally intend for dinosaur to be flying at oh i would have to look it up oh of course you would. Okay. i know that's the story of my life I have to look uh, it up. <laughs> no because the the dinosaur that i was the the incarnation that i've always focused on is the suborbital test version of it that had the potential to go into orbit oh. but was never Oh, there's the shift. Oh, I made a mistake shift. there. I made a mistake. That's the screen shift. And what I was supposed to do there was... I was trying to... Uh, okay, well, I kind of messed that up. I, I meant to shut down the engines first ah. uh, and detach this stage so it would fall into the atmosphere. Now we're spinning around in space. Whee! Can't you shut the engine off now? No, because it's not attached. It's it's only there because it's pushing into me. <laughs> oh. But now, now we now can got, control it. Can we use reaction yeah. controls? Yes, so we are. How, so wait, how are we getting back into the atmosphere if we don't have an we engine have on the glider? We have these little thrusters. We have little thrusters here to slow us down. do that with just the thrusters. Yeah, we know. We added these little ones at the back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and there are... I'm just having some trouble slowing down this spin here. You know what? If I roll it so that I'm principally pitching, then I will have more... Okay. This could take some time to slow down this rotation. <laughs> but we're in orbit, so we've got time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we're not going to fall back anytime soon. <laughs> but look, you know, it's some sort of success. I guess what I could do is F5. What does F5 do? And then do? F5 is save, ah. and then reload, and right. that should stop us spinning. Unless, of course, the game is saving the spin state. 
Oh, no, it saved the spin state. Well, look, let's see where we are. Amazing. Amazing, look at us, we're flying over the Pacific, and so you can imagine now the dinosaur skipping over Africa onto the night side of the planet. Let's hide that so you can't see how dizzy he's getting. Aww. Over South America, oh, over Australia, sorry. Yeah. Oh look, there's Hawaii! Now we're Pacific, yeah. Yeah, there's Hawaii. And we're getting a sunrise. And we get a sunrise here. Beautiful. Oh, there it is, we've had the sun. And a, and a hint of nausea. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like last time we did this, we also had some vomiting kerbals on our hands. Or kerbals, yeah, kerbals. I, I think I can... Kerbonauts. Oh man, there must be a way to fix it. I, I'm surprised that my reaction control system is not working to stop this. Bad reaction control system. I don't think there's much I can do, it's just... Ugh. Either that, or maybe, you know what, maybe that's the problem. Maybe my uh, stability system is not that good. I'll use the smartass and see if the smartass can fix the problem. It's as a smart, metaphor for everything. Smartass. Smartass. What can't a smartass do? Ah, uh, wow. Everything it says it can do, generally. Yeah, so your smartass is not going to help us, is what you're saying. Uh, well, and look, I mean, here's the thing. We got the dinosaur into orbit, and we don't think That's we don't need true. to bring it back. We've flown it, right? I think at this point, we've admitted I mean, we've shown. <laughs> I mean, in this case, Jeb is a test pilot, and he knew what he signed up for. Yeah, he can get back, though. He still has fuel. We just need to, you know, figure out how to stop that spin. I'm sure there's a way to do it. Should probably stop before uh, he runs out of... <laughs> Reaction control fuel. Yeah. I actually know how I would do it. Watch this. Uh, 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 uh. Get into this sort of... We... Oh, there. Oh, come on. Camera locked. I want locked orientation. So we're spinning that way. So what I want to do is disable this, right? Shut right. down this engine. And then this engine's still thrusting. So there, fire that engine up and it should cancel the rotation. Eventually. But Sometime. then, can but then you get what? fuel into the other one so that we can re-enter the atmosphere? Oh, yeah, rapidly? yeah. We'll totally, okay. We totally have enough fuel. We're just cutting down the rotation rate eventually at some point. He'll survive. It's Jeb. Jeb with a parachute. Yeah, you see, he's slowing down. Soon his uh, his system. This is like so Neil Armstrong done, had this, right? I was right? just gonna say. I was just gonna say what we've done is accidentally recreate Gemini Eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only plus dinosaur minus Agena. <laughs> right. That's awesome. There we did it. We totally we recovered wow. from the spin. Yep. Way to go, Neil. We will call you Neil, Neil. from now. He was on. so badass. He is such a badass. Well, there character. is a Neil Kerman. Is there? Of course there is. Yeah, and there's a monument to uh, Neil Armstrong on the moon in Kerbal Space Program. Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, because, you know, Neil. He was pretty Neil. awesome. Yeah, he was good. Okay. Well, I'm going to call that a night. Yep. Let's just get a nice closing shot of dinosaur in orbit. Look. Sun setting Sunset over Africa. The dinosaur. Sun setting over Africa. I see the dinosaurs down in Africa. <laughs> uh, I feel like that is the indication that we are tired enough. <laughs> I, I kind of like I this shot. I see the dinosaurs down in Africa. That is actually a really beautiful ending shot. Yeah. All right, nicely done. Yeah, great. We'll be nicely do done. Like Yay. Okay, two hours of, of, of this silliness. <laughs> uh, two hours of Kerbal. Oh, man, For and all that flight. editing we're going to have to do. Oh, I man. know. Fun times, good times. Fun times, good times. Well, thanks for showing up. Yeah, thanks for flying for me, because <laughs> I couldn't do this. <laughs> I barely managed myself. But you did, and that's what matters. Fly safe. You see? <laughs> nice. Um, hocked over it. On my end of things, let me know in the comments below, you guys, what you thought of our build and what you would like us to eventually build again when we can collab again in like four months because we're both very busy. 
Be sure to leave me all of your thoughts, comments, questions, and ideas for future episodes in the comments below. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram for daily Venture Space content and with new videos going up every single week. Subscribe right here so you never miss an episode. Yay! I get through that so fast now. <laughs> That's great.